Hello and welcome. My name is Jay Chandran. In the short video, we are going to learn about layer 3 switching, but it's a part 2 of layer 3 switching. In part 1 of layer 3 switching, I was teaching you inter VLAN routing, router on a stick. Inter VLAN routing, router on a stick. This is part 2 of layer 3 switching. In this, what we are going to see is the drawback that we have in router on a stick and uh, what is the solution for that that is what we are going to see the drawback in layer 3 switching is this if you see link between uh, router and the switch the, the wire between router and the switch it has a shared bandwidth it has a shared bandwidth why you know we created two sub interface and it has shared bandwidth VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 goes on same link now when you try to ping from 10.1 to 20.1 you you are able to ping how it is possible see trace route see it says it goes to router so it says the gateway uh, it, it goes to router 1 and then goes to the final destination Likewise, when I when I say trace route from uh, the other PC, 20.2 PC, 10.0.0.1, it says it goes to 20.0.0.1. Where where this IP addresses are? We configure on the sub interface. Show IP interface brief on the router we configured. So, if I go from 10 10 VLAN to 20 VLAN, it goes to router. 20 VLAN to 10 VLAN, it goes to router. So, here the link between switch and the router takes same packet twice a shared bandwidth packet goes and comes back via the same interface twice via the same link. So, the path that you take you know here it takes it consumes some, some time to send and send it back take it and send it back the time is wasted actually see if I will have a router here on the switch itself you uh, you can avoid this time the time taken to traverse between switch and the router if I have a router and a switch together I can I can uh, I can save this time not only that I no need to share a bandwidth see if I have uh, simultaneous traffic between VLAN 10 and uh, 20 li like this ping ifnt 20.0.0.1 no space come on yeah it's pinging likewise I'll ping from this PC Now what happens actually bandwidth is shared between two different <coughs> sub interface not only that it is a bottleneck how it is bottleneck the packets are coming to the switch processed in the motherboard speed back panel speed it is called as back panel speed processed in motherboard speed sent via a narrow fast ethernet shared interface to the router a router processed in a back panel speed again since via a narrow route uh, yeah link so this is what you know bottleneck delay unnecessary delay that is a drawback not only that single point failure if this link goes down there are a lot of chance for link to go so you know that is a drawback you know you process in a back panel speed and send via on narrow passage again process on the router in the, with the mother motherboard speed is very big and then you send to an 100 mbps link that to a shared link that's one drawback another drawback if uh, if the link between these two device fails gone single point failure router will not fail so easily cisco routers are more reliable switches are more reliable but link between router and switch you cannot trust right to avoid this 
drawback we need layer 3 switching we call this multi layer switch so we can do inter vlan routing using multi layer switch also now i would like to pass the video and bring a multi layer switch and show you now what you see is a multi layer switch instead of uh, <coughs> two device i have one single device see that is again another advantage you no need to have uh, two device you no need to maintain two device you have only one device now you may say what single point failure what will happen no it's not easy to uh, uh, switches won't go down so easily road cisco devices are more reliable a link may go down easily right now this is both a switch as well as the router that's why we call it as multi layer switch means you know it works on both layer 2 and layer 3 now I, i'll configure this router see it's it's request time route because we don't have vlan now configure we don't do we have not done inter vlan routing now that's why it is showing request time route now i am on this multi layer switch let us configure it's a fresh switch we'll say host name uh, give any name inter vlan routing i'll give interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 10 <coughs> same like as we did on sorry as we did on layer 2 switch you do that next interface fast ethernet 0 slash 2 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20 let us verify show ip brief now sorry it's not show ip interface brief show vlan brief it says vlan 10 and vlan 20 0 slash 1 is in vlan 10 0 slash 2 in vlan 20 now they belong to different broadcast domains still they will not be pinging why we need a layer 3's help now this switch is still a layer 2 switch it has layer 3 capability now we need to enable that so how many vlans we have we have two vlans now what is the gateway address that we have given for vlan 10 member 10.0.0.100 I'll show you that. See, 10.0.0.100. So this we need to give as a gateway. Likewise, in this PC we have given 20.0.0.100. All right. Now, go to the multi-layer switch and type interface VLAN. See, it's a layer three interface, not simply VLAN interface VLAN interface VLAN 10 created it's a logical interface I want to give IP address 10.0.0.100 Now, creating this interface VLAN 10 is not possible in layer 2 switch it's only possible in layer 3 switch and giving an IP address like this is not possible in layer 2 switch. Now creating interface VLAN is called as SVI, switched virtual interface, SVI. So now I have created one SVI called VLAN 10. Now we have created one SVI, let us verify that. See, show IP interface brief, look at this, you have an interface called VLAN 10, it is there, up. VLAN 1 is there by default, but we don't use VLAN 10 now, for 1 now, we use 10. One more, interface VLAN 20, <coughs> I say IP address 20.0.0.100. So this IP address is common for all those who are member of VLAN 20. So this is what you know, SVI, let us verify now one more time, show interface brief look at this two SVI's have been created and it is up type show IP route I also have a route so we see 
10 network is pointing towards SPI VLAN 10 SPI 20 now we have VLAN interfaces we have uh, also routing in case if you didn't find this table routing table in some iOS you need to type IP unicast or IP routing IP routing command in some routers you need to type this only then you will find this routing table in some switches in some switches multi layer switch some old I can say IP routing command you need to type in the global configuration mode IP routing so if you for if you don't find the routing table make sure you go to the interface sorry uh, global configuration mode and type IP routing that's it right now let us ping and see the adjacent device first I want to check whether properly see here you don't need to create trunk you don't have single point failure you don't have uh, that uh, router uh, with sub interface and encapsulation dot one key all the stuff let me try pinging uh, that 10.0.0.1 which is directly connected I am pinging 20.0.0.1 that also I should ping come on yeah pinging now if that is the case then I should ping from uh, see I am pinging already I will stop the pinging I will do one more time pinging I am on which PC IP config I am on 10 PC I am pinging 20.0.0.1 it pings right so this is what uh, you know advantage of having a multi layer switch in the place of one router and one switch instead of having two device you have both the device and single dev single device what is the advantage single time processing only once it is getting processed in previous case it is getting processed by a switch sent to a router if router permits forward that otherwise denied so after processing after going through a long route it is getting denied sometime here you don't have that problem single time processing you process it decide whether to send or drop now this is what you know the advantage of using a multi layer switch over a uh, router on a stick so hope you understood this but before we go to third video the third video is about Ceph Cisco Express forwarding FIB forward information base I would like to show you those things that is there in these switches multi layer switches and router even router also has that I will show you show run by default IP routing is enabled by default Ceph is also enabled you will find IP Ceph if not we will enable now I want to show shows show IP safe look at this this is what called the safe table Cisco Express forwarding safe table now we will talk about this thing in detail in next video safe table So hope you understood this intervalent routing using a multi layer switch if you will have any queries or if you would like to give any feedback you are most welcome please do write to me professor chandran at yahoo.com right thank you see you in the next video bye bye